Welcome, welcome to Shadow Me Tarot. Today we are doing a um, pick a pile reading. So whichever stone or card resonates with you most is the pile that you're going to want to choose and then go to that section of the video. If you like my video, please like, subscribe, and share. Um, I am truly grateful for all of your um, all of your subscribes, everybody who's watching. Um, I, I really do appreciate any of your feedback. Um, if you do put um, a like or like a thumbs up or a heart in the comments that does help my channel as well so again I truly appreciate um, all of you for watching and uh, stay tuned pile number one all right what is the overall feeling of this reading for pile number one for the person who is watching Thank you, beautiful spirit, for all of your guidance, love, and light. What is the overall message for this reading? The person who needs this reading. Okay. We've got Virgo and Cancer, and underneath really stuck to Cancer is Gemini here. And um, so it says, full moon in Virgo, take inspired action. Um, and then the last quarter moon in Cancer, take a breather. Last quarter moon in Gemini, clear your mind. Um, so you may be dealing with a uh, Cancer or a Gemini. Uh, you may be the Virgo. Um, or you may have a Virgo who's inspiring um, you to do something or you're inspired. Um, I feel like um, in the near future you're going to be working um, towards something really, really... Um, uh, there's going to be a reason to take a breather. Like you're gonna, like somebody's going to tell you to come up for air. Um, and, and I think you're just going to hit like a stopping point. I'm feeling like a stopping point kind of coming in. And so this taking a breather is really just for you to um, clear your mind. So if you haven't, um, if you're not already in an, a very active state where you maybe need to take a breather, um, just remember when you go, go into this um, new project that you um, remember to take care of yourself and, and not can't burn the candle at, at both ends. Um, come up for air. <laughs> clear your mind you're gonna get more done in a shorter period of time if you're clear um, and you're not trying so hard so that's what I kind of get from, from those cards there for our overall reading and tell me more about our viewer in pile one tell me more about the viewer who chose pile one me more about the viewers who chose pile one. All right. There we go. Okay. So I kind of feel, I mean, this is a new beginning card and you don't really, um, uh, you don't really read these in the reverse. So, or this particular deck in the reverse. So my, my first feeling with this new beginning is that, um, it's like new inspire, um, new inspiration in, in this, in an old situation, right? So you've been at the same job for 10 years, but you've got a new spin on it and, uh, and a new, a new drive and a new appreciation and it's really kind of like yes I get to dig in here um, and and do what I love doing um, and, and start something kind of like just kind of turning over a new leaf in an old situation is kind of how I feel and so I think you are very excited about this um, but make sure you do come up for air um, don't sacrifice your life um, so we've got a sacrifice and disruption here you don't want to sacrifice everything in your life for this one project because so because then you know then everything comes tumbling down right um so you're going to need some of that time 
um, to clear your mind, not only to spend time with your family or the people who want your attention and time and need your attention and time and part of your life, um, outside of this, this new beginning, this new project, this new, um, passion that you have, um, you have to sacrifice that a little bit and take a breather so that you can focus on those, um, the other things, the love in your life. Um, so it, this can't be disruptive to this. This can't be disruptive to that. So you're looking for kind of like some, some balance there. Um, and I feel like, um, the lesson is, um, you know, what can be sacrificed for your peace of mind. Um, and that you have the best of both worlds because you can have all that you want and there's time for everything. Let's see. What is the guidance for this situation here? What is the guidance for this situation? True prosperity will begin. Okay. So we, the balance between the, this, you know, whatever this new passion is, um, and whatever, you are sacrificing some time with your family, but you do need to come up for air. And I say family loosely because it's away from, like, the thing that you have been um, relied upon for for some time, right? Um, so the sacrifice is okay. Um, it's okay that we have disruptions. Um, just keep your mind clear because this is new prosperity for you. This is new um, new levels of abundance for you. Um, it looks like you have a partner or partnership within communities. Um, you're definitely growing something. Um, oh. But yes, Spirit is definitely saying you need to rest and rejuvenate. Um, you can't put everything into it and not take care of anything else. Um, kind of is the... Okay, that seems to be the guidance that I'm getting. I'm like, okay, that's enough. <laughs> um, Spirit, can you tell me more about this new beginning? Tell me more about this new beginning. Oh, oh you're using your intuition, um, your innate skills. I feel like you've found flow, as in like getting in the flow, finding flow from spirit into your daily life and finding that inspiration. Tell me more about this new beginning. Thank you, beautiful spirit, for all of your guidance on the mic. Can you tell me more about this beginning? All right. So we've got the King of Wands. Um, okay, so my first impression was that... Um, you're able to finally get out of the way of somebody who is a roadblock to you. You're able to work around them right now. Um, I feel like, do you think that you're smarter than this person? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Nine of swords. Maybe they've caused you quite a bit of um, anxiety. Um, so maybe this person is gone from your life. I hope this person is gone from your life. Um, um, Okay, so if this is a love reading, if this is a love reading, perhaps there was a person who was maybe possessive um, and caused anxiety. Something with anxiety, I kind of think of the King of Wands as a man of passion all over town, um, <laughs> that kind of thing, and your intuition kind of... Um, knows this about this person and it's like he doesn't have a care in the world and I say he loosely because this isn't just masculine energy not necessarily male or female um, um, so I feel like there's some sort of new beginning um, be maybe in the way that you are approaching this, this person um, let's see what is this taking a breather? Maybe you took a breather. Um, I feel like this person is just not able to get to you anymore. That's really what I'm feeling. 
It is like somebody who was just weighing you down. All right. What is this? Tell me more about the sacrifice and disruption. Tell me more about sacrifice and disruption. Oh, wow. You're just really in a happy place. You're just really in a happy place now that this person has kind of been removed from your environment. Um, I think it, it took a lot of sacrifice to get to this place of, of happiness. I think that you've come over an entire transformation. I think getting away from the situation allowed you to breathe. And now your mind is clear to enjoy your own happiness, just to enjoy the freedom, just enjoying your freedom. All right. And then you have the five of wands, so you have no conflict. Um, just the world is open to you. Okay. That one says eight of swords. Um, well, you know what? It's a whole lot better. This eight of swords is a lot better being imprisoned by your own thoughts and limited by your own thoughts than somebody else's. And that's kind of how I feel um, here. And there's not going to be much of a sacrifice um, for you to... There is, it is no sacrifice. You sacrifice nothing when you take care of yourself, right? You have no conflict. Um, you have no worries. And, um, and what you think as rest and rejuvenation is a sacrifice. You're not sacrificing anything. When you rest and rejuvenate, you, you tell yourself that you deserve it. You love yourself. You, um, In that rejuvenation period, you are getting that inspiration from um, source to move to the next thing. Um, there is no sacrifices you have to make anymore. All right, let's take a look at... I want to get an overall meaning for this kind of like in the near future kind of here. We've got prosperity beginning. Um, you know, where you're going to have the time to just kind of just rest and just like take a, a breath, you know, clear your mind. That's coming towards you. Um, you have a new level of prosperity, a new level of things to look forward to in life. Um, no conflict. Um, the only um, anxious thoughts are your own um, and nothing that you really have to sacrifice. So I kind of want to just kind of get an overall guidance with just this, this here. Um, what is going on here? Using an Egyptian tarot by Schwaller. Um, and I think I got this on Tarot Arts. All right. And this one says um, nine, confusion. What are you confused about? What you like? What you want to do? What are you confused about? is this confusion maybe you're confused by the fact that you don't have are you going through like a survivor's guilt you survived all this and now um, you don't know how to live your life I, I kind of feel like that very much let's see what this says um, but it does mean confusion Ah, oh, yes, but in the upright, it means truth, which if I could read that language, I could probably discern that. Um, so this is Mott. <clears throat> um, she made her appearance in the Old Kingdom. <clears throat> um, she's an expression, expression of the order of nature and society of justice and truth, both in the earthly world and the afterlife. So I feel like just that alone, like you no longer have to worry about this other person. You only have to worry about yourself because, um, you know, what you put out there comes back to you, both for you and everyone else. So in reading the, the reference in the book, it says that this is refers to an honest and sincere person, lover of truth and justice, man or woman engaged in research, understood in a specific area of reality. Um, the meaning of this is austerity, caution, security, meditation, 
love for the truth, shelter against negative events. And that's really where I feel here is that um, you are sheltered um, from the maybe the past events um, from negative people. Um, so this I really do feel is protection from negative um, people or people who don't have your your best interest at heart and you can trust that you've attracted people um, who are good counsel to you. So I want to get one last deck for you. One oracle card. All right, we'll use Queen of the Moon Oracle for your overall guidance for the entire reading. Um, what's the overall guidance for this reading? All right, the overall guidance for this reading is the masculine, the lunar god, number 42. So I think what I want to do, the first impression that I have with this um, masculine card is that I feel like there, um, I feel like perhaps there was a masculine energy that kind of ruled your life. And perhaps that has been a consistent thing throughout your life where there's a masculine energy. And I really feel like you are needing to step into your own masculine power, your own um, leadership qualities. What, because we have both the feminine and the masculine in each one of us. So if someone else has led with the masculine within your life, I feel like in order for you to be sheltered from negative people, you also need to develop the masculine within you. Um, so that being said, um, the lunar God, the masculine, it is time to step forward and lead, be the leader in your own life. You have more power than you think. It is time to formally learn more. Enroll in a course or learn a new skill. Offer your protection to someone weaker than yourself. Take steps to improve your health and vitality. May the positive attributes of the masculine align with me. That is the affirmation. May the positive attributes of the masculine align with me. While lunar gods are rare, usually their realms are the solar. They are conspicuous when they appear. The Australian Aboriginal deity of the Wanaro tribal area, Miami, encourages us to observe the laws of the land and to appreciate the beauty around us. Miami is depicted with having big eyes and no mouth, teaching us that sometimes beauty does not need to be spoken about, just witnessed with the eyes of our head and our heart. The Norse god, Mani, the moon himself, teaches us to be wise about the passage of time. The Mesopotamian scene shows us how to ask about the future and how to, important it is to protect the weak. There are many more. The traditional positive attributes of the masculine, such as strength, physical vitality, power of will, shielding, and protection of the weak are important for anyone to adopt, no matter their gender or orientation. Should you pull this card, it is asking you to step up into your power, your uniqueness, and offer your guidance to those who may need it. Your companion stone or metal is the black opal. So please like, subscribe, and share if this resonated for you. Um, and have a beautiful, blessed day. You chose the pink stone pile. All right. There. Wow. Just popped right out there. 30. I am blooming. I am full of authenticity because I bloom exactly the way I was meant to. Nice. 24. My thoughts are powerful. As I'm aware of the power of my thoughts, I'm able to create my dream life. 7. Patience pays off. I'm patient because I know I'm going through a process and am full acceptance of this situation. Okay. All right. So when I worked with these cards earlier, I um, felt like I get a lot of um, information from the Vintage Wisdom Oracle um, because I feel like so much of our um, personal growth in this lifetime is the healing of ancestral wounding, you know, the things that have been passed down for generations. And it can be things as simple as a, a saying, you know, that are based in um, a negative uh, trauma or, you know, oppression or um, 
and all kinds of things. So I find that these cards kind of bring to the surface some of those things um, that may be affecting um, uh, or how our ancestry and our spirit guides are kind of affecting. Anyways, this, this helps for that for me. Um, so let's get some clarity on this 30 here. I am blooming. the wisdom behind blooming. Thank you. Wow. You have ooh, freedom and faith. So not only are you free in spirit, right? And living in your truth, you have faith in where you're going. So what a wonderful place to be in. Congratulations. Um, Really, a lot of clarity of thought. I feel like you're very clear in your thinking right now. More patience. Patience, patience. So I feel like um, you're even telling yourself you have to be patient. <laughs> um, I think... Um, so I think now that you... Oh gosh, that's so funny. I just feel like, okay, so you found your freedom. You You can be or do anything right and you know that and you're like I can bring my thoughts and ideas into reality um but I feel like the struggle is is patience right and the very next card over here patience pays off um so maybe patience is a life lesson or something for you but we're going to dig into that a little bit deeper um let's see So many butterflies in this picture I, and it says expression and I just feel like there's more shedding that you're doing um, to reach full expression um, and it just takes time it's gonna take that patience but you're doing all the right things I think the more free you feel the more faith the fe that you feel the more um, you're able to relax into what you want is coming towards you it's here um, you will experience the full expression of that. But you, you do have to take the time and go through each of the little steps and things that we let go of um, in order to achieve like our own um, self-awakening, um, our own enlightenment, um, and tapping into our highest self and our highest potential. Uh, so I wanna know what it is that you must be patient about. What must you be patient about? What is needing some expression here? But you are beautiful. And I think appreciating, wow, who you are, this freedom that you have, the faith and belief that the next day is coming. Uh, what a gift. What a gift. So relish it. Um, enjoy it. This is the Nine of Pentacles. You are just bossed up right now. You have everything your heart desires. You've worked hard for where you are. Uh, but it looks like um, you feel like you haven't done enough. Um, and you're not... Oh, okay, so the message here is clear to me. The message here is very clear. You are focusing rather on what you... Um, have and appreciating the abundance that you have created and you are showing and you're telling yourself how you're inadequate and you haven't gotten everything that you put out there but look how far you've come look at the kind of freedom that you have in your th in your thoughts and your actions and what you do like you and and you you can go anywhere and do anything and be anything but you feel like you're not enough just being getting to a point where you can be anything, do anything, is enough. You are enough. You can't compare yourself to anything else. 
And when you give thoughts of this is not enough, then you bring not enough. So instead, I would, I would kind of encourage you to appreciate, appreciate uh, what you have done for yourself. Um, be grateful for what you have done for yourself. Be grateful um, that it's there. Don't have an expectation of anything because um, if you're not grateful for it and you don't think that you're enough, you're going to bring not enough towards you. Um, so I do kind of feel like the lesson here is don't take for granted what you have. Appreciate what you have. The more grateful you are for the things that you have, and if that's starting with your own breath, and I think that you know that, right? Starting with your own breath. I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful to breathe this fresh air. I'm, I'm grateful that there's fresh air to breathe. I'm grateful that there's a roof over my head to protect me from the elements. I'm grateful because there's food in my refrigerator and I, I won't go hungry. I'm grateful for the numerous amounts of things that we take for granted every day. Um, start being grateful for those little things and then definitely be grateful for your resources. Um, be happy with what you have materialistically um, because there's nothing more you need to be. What you need to be will come in its, in its divine time. Um, but I feel like you have a lot of resources right now um, and it's just a matter of being grateful. If you want the next part to happen, you have to, you cannot look for what you don't have. You have to look at what you do have and be grateful. All right, so let's see what's happening here. I really feel like you're being so hard on yourself and it's so unnecessary. Spirit loves you so much. Um, okay, so these all want to come out. So we've got <clears throat> the Ace of Wands here. Um, be grateful. Again, the message here is be grateful for what you have. You're not expressing yourself because you you don't see how grateful or how many things are beautiful and wonderful in your life. Um, and if you're going through, oh, I feel like you're free. I mean, some of you might be free of an addiction now. That's kind of some of the impression that I'm kind of getting. Um, so addiction could be addiction, people, places, things drugs, alcohol, like whatever, but I feel like there's some sort of freedom from um, an addiction that left you with an abundance of, of money. Um, or, or, you know, something that, you know, it's just kind of enough enough resources that you can, you can kind of take them for granted, I guess. Um, but there is this dissatisfaction with self um, that maybe you're not progressing as, as fast as you would, that this feeling of, of freedom that you had um, and, and believing in yourself is and, and having these resources is diminishing, right? Um, and, and you're not having necessarily patience with yourself, but in being patient with yourself and loving yourself and telling yourself um, how wonderful you are, you're going to create the dream life that you need, but you have to change your, your thoughts. You have to be patient with yourself. Um, and that patience is going to pay off um, in terms of um, being ex able to express yourself um, I feel like there's a cutting loose of the things that no longer serve you. Um, um, particularly things of conflict. And you're going to go towards more loving relationships. Um, you're not going to... I think you're going to have good boundaries, but I don't think that you're going to let yourself go or just succumb to a relationship just because. Um, I feel like you're, you're going to, there's going to be new union here. Um, there's definitely going to be a new union here. Um, but you're, you have to, You've got to fight some of those negative thoughts. You really need to fight some of your negative thoughts. Your truest expression is definitely, you know, cutting away the things that no longer serve you. Um, sometimes there's conflict, some, um, but it looks like you're looking for, um, I feel like there's like a, um, I feel like coming in, yeah, okay, so... Cutting away the thing that no longer serves you is your negative thinking. 
that you have nothing to be grateful for or that you're not enough. And if you can be patient with yourself and do that um, and, and, and tell you, remind yourself the things that to be grateful for, you'll find less conflict in your life. And I do see um, as a result of that gratitude, um, your expression into the world is going to be, it's coming off as this kind of like healthy banter where you're creating new relationships, new partnerships. You're not fearing. Um, I think you do have boundaries where you are afraid. You're afraid of love. You're afraid of trusting people. Um, so like you probably have really good boundaries, but I feel like um, I feel like your biggest enemy is your own, your own thoughts. Um, I definitely feel like your biggest enemy is your own thoughts. Um, but you're going to persevere. I mean, you're looking past that and there's so much for you, so much ahead for you. Um, but it starts with appreciating what you, what you currently have, the things that you take for granted, you need to be thankful for and thank them out loud. Um, a hummingbird came to me when I was fishing on the river and looked me and my partner right in the face and I and hummingbirds to me mean happiness right so I immediately thanked the hummingbird thank you thank you for recognizing my happiness thank you for um, you know you know coming coming to see me just thank you you know thank you thank the grass for being green thank the um skies for being blue thank um you know the sun for setting and thank the sun for rising um wherever you can find that place of gratitude the more grateful you are the more grateful you'll feel the more the happier you'll feel the more powerful your thoughts will be and in that patience you will find new healthy relationships um, to help you um, move forward because I feel like there's this sense of you don't know what you want um, but I don't think that you know you'll know what you want until you recognize what you have and I think that's the blessing of this reading I'm going to pull a card for you um, I'm just gonna this is just I've just I've never ever called with this deck only for myself wonderful look at this there's a beautiful these are beautiful pictures um, Oh, castle and there's a peacock in there um, so this is a very abundant um, picture of transformation and abundance I almost feel like if if you're a person who's um, in retirement um, you're trying to find what it is that that you you like to do what you want to do um, and you're just kind of kind of stuck right now so I'm gonna encourage you to try new things um, let's see what this says it says reflection time to focus balance reflect and guide yourself past stumbling blocks to take the right actions the reflections card is an indication that problems you may be having with the matter in question are the result of too much activity or forward movement and not enough taking time to calmly evaluate the situation either on your part or the part of another person involved. It is an invitation to sit comfortably, breathe slowly and deeply, and experience your present situation lightly in your mind's eye, the center of your consciousness. It is time to see things as they really are, stripped of all the extraneous trappings like expectations or recognition. The creative process often creates numerous secondary attachments and unintended consequences that can easily confuse and disorganize even the best of intentions and the most organized efforts. Reflection is the pause that refreshes. It should be an integral part of every creative endeavor, especially at their beginning, midpoint, and end. That is your, uh, that is your reading for the pink stone. Um, I think what I've got gained most from this is, um, uh, be, be grateful for, for what you have. Definitely be grateful for what you have and what you want will come towards you. And be patient, right? You've got to be patient. <laughs> you are enough just as you are right now doing absolutely nothing. Um, that is sometimes enough. So do that. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, so you chose the red stone. All right, innovation, new creations, 
courage, strength, fierceness, family. Calming the waters, peaceful, self-regulation. And deep emotions, unknown feelings, past life influences. Okay, so just the past life influences. Like, I feel like I need to pull a card on what I'm using as my past life deck. I'm finding it very useful and kind of getting to the source of things. Um, so first I kind of want to address like the overall of this reading. I do, and I am very much feeling like a career reading, um, or something to do with the work or what you're passionate about in terms of occupation, how you occupy your time. So in occupation, I just kind of feel like there's some like new creations that you, um, are strong, you are fierce and your family is behind you. Um, but I also feel like, um, you're needing, um, to self-regulate and become more calm and because it can be very exciting to be in that position where you're, um, so kind of like, uh, deflating the watermelon head, maybe so you don't fall over <laughs> kind of things, but it feels like there might be some fear of success feelings popping up to the surface. So I want to kind of see where that's kind of coming from. Um, so I'm just going to kind of get some clarity on these. Okay, so yeah, I feel like it is your nature to innovate. Um, I feel like you're in an abundant place right now where you have the ability to to, in, uh, to innovate and you're protected. Uh, your ancestors are protecting you. Um, I also feel like... Um, I can't put to words... Alright, so this didn't fall all the way out, but we're going to put it there because it flipped over. Um, I feel like your thoughts are being protected by your ancestors. Um, I think that you could have a tendency to go to the negative, but you're in your reflections, but your ancestors are giving you discipline. Um, as a result, you are... Somehow you're at peace. Your perception has shifted. You do have a new hope. And your intention. You're living with intention. Perhaps you're having trouble with trusting and you don't know. So the trust is coming from your ancestral wounding. Okay, so there is an, a past life influence. So if there's any doubt that you're having, because what is in your life right now, any doubt that you're having um, for what you're kind of doing, uh, the doubt is coming from your past life, your ancestral wounding, um, whether your own or your family's um, in the past, whatever's been passed kind of down. Um, and I want to say that is in relationship to career. So you've kind of been learned not to trust. I think you've been taught not to trust. Um, what is the nature of this career reading? I'm kind of see what's going on with the career side. Because I, I thought this was a career reading almost before I started. And I pulled this deck from a place where I never go. Okay, so you're moving into a place of leadership in the business world. Oh, I'm, I'm getting um, uh, imposter syndrome stuff. Like maybe you feel like you're not worthy of this. Um, those are your ancestral wounding. You are absolutely worthy of it and you absolutely know it. You absolutely know it. So this is ancestral wounding. Um, but it does look like you're, you, it is time for you to step into a leadership role. Fear. And loss. Um... If you don't trust, you will lose. Um, and what you have to do is shift your perception. You need to come to center. You need to shift your perception. You deserve exactly what you're going after. Um, your fear is that you're going to lose everything. If you, if you don't do what your family did or you don't do it the way that they've done it in the past, that this is too big of a risk for you. And so if you have that kind of fear, you're going to manifest that kind of fall. Um, so I really kind of want to say, you know, kind of, kind of stay, um, I want to say stick with it. Um, 
Some of you might even be starting your own new, your own business. Um, and you're in a leadership position that you didn't know you could. And maybe you're afraid. Fear expresses itself in a lot of different ways. Fear can express itself in not being strong enough or being overly strong. Um, and in this case, I feel like your fear is driving mistrust. And as a result, you're going, you could lose like the people that you've acquired to help you. So I think you really need to address your fears, um, of either success or failure. You don't want to sabotage your own success. Um, you don't want your fear to forget about, um, your great, to, um, free, you don't want fear to make you forget your greatness. Um, stay positive. Um, you are already out of your comfort zone. Just relax into it. Um, let's see. So I want to get some more information on these here. I, I do am very much feeling like you're starting a new business. Um, what's kind of going on with this leadership position here? Yeah, you're in a new management position of some sort. You're managing people, and you're taking care and di uh, diverting all of the resources. Or you're designating all of the resources. Um, I do very much feel like you have the support of your family. Um, and I want to say your ancestral family. Um, you have your spirit family really on your side, and, and I really feel pushing pushing you towards this. Um, they're protecting you. Um, I think that it is good for you to think about how um, historically your family has dealt with business. Um, you know, were they, were they intimidated? Um, did they pursue executive positions? Um, did they think big or did they think small? And I feel like um, acknowledging your own difference in thinking from your ancestral, uh, from your ancestors, like everything that came before you made you who you are today. So just because you think differently doesn't mean that they would disagree with you because you have a new life and a new experience. And in healing that ancestral wounding, you're going to know that you're worthy of taking on, on larger challenges, living big instead of small. Um, let's get some more insight on this business. You absolutely deserve this, though. You are worthy of this. You are absolutely worthy of starting your own business. You deserve it. You deserve it for you and everyone who's come before you. You are healing a huge ancestral wounding. And not only do, do you deserve to make partnerships with other people that um, you can bear the fruits of your labor. This is nothing, nothing, nothing. Like your childhood. Nothing. Nothing that you've ever experienced before. This is a brand new experience. Um, but you cannot think of it as a false victory. You can't. And that's just leading into your fear. I, I just feel like this imposter syndrome. Um, you, you must let that go. Because you are doing good in the leadership position. You are doing well. And you are creating these new relationships. And even though you kind of feel like a fish out of water. Um, it is important to celebrate your victory. Um, in a new place, but I feel like um, you deserve, accept that you deserve the victory. What's going on with this fear? Oh, you're afraid to trust. You're afraid to trust. So I feel like um, you are working really hard to kind of regulate yourself and your own emotions. Fear can bring up um, a lot of anger, sadness, depression. Um, anxiety um, and I think it is important to go back to self um, remove the mask um, 
dig into how you see yourself, what your hopes are, and how you're going to achieve them. What intentions are you going to put out when you achieve them? And I feel like what you want is help, um, and you have the help. Um, I feel like you do have the help. Um, for some of you, this might be a new love, or you're afraid of new love. Um, taking you away from what you have kind of going on here. Here I see, um, you know, a new union, a new partnership in business, um, perhaps a new romantic relationship, but I feel like somebody, I feel like somebody's coming in who you are afraid to trust your, their intentions. What are their intentions, so to speak? Um, I want some more information. Are they just a fly-by-night? So if you have like a romantic thing kind of going on, um, or even if you've got this new relationship and you think that they're just going to be in and out of your life, it's up to you um, to decide if that's okay with you. You have the choice right now because you can see it and you know it. Um, so they may just be in your life for a short period um, to help you out, um, but don't let their opinion supersede your own. Yeah. Um. I really feel like you are looking at the world for what it is. And I, I applaud you, actually. You are overcoming this fear. But there is a fear of trust. And there is a fear of letting people come in for a short period of time to help you out and then let them go. Um, but I feel like you're seeing above the tree line, right? You're able to see the bigger picture. Um, I think you're able to see more of the forest. You're able to see the bigger picture. Um, instead of the certain circumstances. And I do feel like even though you're afraid of allowing people to kind of come in and just help you out for a little bit, it's okay when they, they leave, that you're coming to not only like that and appreciate it, um, you're, it's, it seems like a necessity. So if you're counting on a person who uh, to be there for you during this kind of adventure, whether it's a new um, business or you know a new management position within a business, um, the person who's helping you is only going to be there for a short period of time until you can fly. And then they're going to, to go away. Um, you don't have to put all your trust in anybody, but trust yourself. At the very least, trust yourself. Um, I feel like... Um, I feel like your biggest fear is losing the position that you've attained. Um, so... Like with anything, uh, what you think about, you bring about. So I feel like you feel like you're going to have to work really, really hard um, at the at this position. And you are strong enough. You can trust that you're capable of doing this. And the only trust that you're having is these are just... Um, insecurities ancestral insecurities something that's been passed down it doesn't even belong to you i feel like you need to cut that loose so that you're able to trust more um, and trust that people who are coming into your life are there for a moment a reason um, to help you along the path and then they're moving on on their own path um, but they're giving you a larger picture in that in that um, interaction um, they're pulling you away from the tree and and above the forest so you can see the big picture and you are going to lose that they're not going to be there forever, um, but they are here for a lesson. Um, what is the outcome of this? If you trust this person and you and you get everything that you can in a short period of time, what can you hope to gain? Maybe it is that you won't be able to pay this person long term. Um, so you need to get the most out of them while you can. Ah, now I see this is much more clear. Much more clear. You have, as we all do, have a large ego. You must be right. And I feel like you will be able to trust more 
if you drop your ego. And basically to me, in my head, my ego tells me all of the bad things about me and it builds cases against me. Um, and because I have all these cases built up against me, when somebody hits on a trust issue for me where I've already built up a case against myself, now I have, uh, I'm not looking at it clearly, I'm now looking at it through the lens of my case against me and I go on the defensive. And and then my defensive tells me that this person in front of me, I'm not able to trust them. And because I'm not able to trust them, then what they say holds no weight. Um, so I feel like you have to get past being right and that your way of thinking is right. And the more that you're able to let go of that, the more likely you're going to thrive in this new position of leadership. I want to get a little bit, what you're not seeing is that you do need to make a change. You need to make a change. You need to bring your barriers down. You need to see that things are sometimes just not fair. Um, but that has nothing to do with the circumstance. Cut away the things that no longer serve you. Um, so you can get the best of the world. I mean, I really feel like there's some shadow work and self-development that needs to go here that you need to embrace, that the world is not against you. Um, that is 100% what I'm feeling right here. If you don't do that, you do risk um, this job opportunity of leadership, and you'll have to learn this lesson in another situation. But your biggest obstacle right now is your, um, is your ego. You are afraid of being wrong or less than. Um, you cannot compare yourself to other people. You can, you are right where you're supposed to be right now. Um, so learn as much as you can from this person who's coming in. Um, do not feel inferior. You are perfect just as you are. Cut away the thoughts in your head that do not serve you. If they are not building you up, that is your ego and it, it does not deserve to exist in your brain. It does not deserve to take up your time. Be fair to yourself. So that you can have the world. Because you absolutely have the world. This is a huge opportunity for you. So absolutely take it. I'm going to go with my healing reading cards. Um, because I feel like they address shadow really well. Alright, beautiful spirit. What does our viewer need to heal? What does pile three need to heal? Awaken your vulnerability. You are not Superman. You can't do it all and nobody believes that you can anyway. Allow others to meet your unprotected heart. To be vulnerable with your feelings requires profound courage and a decision to break the hard shell of protection that keeps you separated, isolated, and afraid of others. Vulnerability connects you to the most hidden aspects of your soul. In this exploration, you have the possibility of discovering your most intimate, delicate, creative, surprising aspects. This may require you to develop more understanding and compassion for yourself and your life's journey, while else at the same time, moving past the pain of rejection or abuse you may have experienced and which cause you to shut down. Whilst it's important to keep certain people at a distance, there are others who are already in or about to come into your light. These people can hold the space for you to step into a soft, honest, gentle exploration of your heart melody. If you refuse and keep suppressing your feelings, you will become exhausted, numb, frustrated, and cold. It's time to warm your heart and start to become and start to be more in touch with what's happening inside your body. What pain are you holding in your lungs, in your heart, throat, kidneys in particular? Take some time out, place your hands on your chest, become aware of how you are breathing into this area. Is it easy to breathe or difficult? Envisage that you have protective barriers around your heart. Now imagine there is a purple flame in front of you. Play some music that touches you and start to slowly peel away those energetic layers. Place them in the purple fire until you feel more confident and open to share. So I think vulnerability is the key. Um, show your humanness. Um, 
show your imperfections and love them about yourself because when you love them about yourself, people can love those imperfections about themselves and then they are more themselves and then they will want to be around you because you're approachable. Um, so drop your ego. The best phrase in the world you can ever say is, I don't know, because it leaves room for growth, right? It gives you the opportunity to grow. Thank you so much for watching. If you like my video, please like, subscribe, and share. Have a beautiful, blessed day.